It is clear there are frequencies that are actively working in a realm of existence that is beyond our perception, such as AM and FM radio waves, television signals, cell phone transmissions, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth broadcast. There are many other forms of signal. There are even sound frequencies that dogs can hear that people cannot. Our brains cannot tune in to certain levels of frequency naturally, although our brains can do things that nothing else can. That is self-awareness. There are other intelligent creatures, but that is not the point of this video. Consciousness is a topic that many people have been attempting to understand for thousands of years. It's like the human mind has no will of its own but operates more like a re remote control avatar. The mind will develop habits and will send electrical signals to the body and create memory. Memory is an interesting concept. It is like a stone that rubs against another stone and after a while it will have a smooth surface. Your brain will learn patterns after a while and develop habits. This is a topic that we will expand upon and we can unpack some of this on a deeper level. Just look at these forces at work and see how they have specific pattern and how it actually translates from the physical realm to the digital electrical realm. Now look at how these patterns can be translated from the human mind. As we begin to explore the different frequencies and vibrations, we begin to see that everything is related electrically, as if everything is an electrical conduit. Now pay attention to the next segment of this video. You'll find that there is a connection between light and stimulation from electricity and how they all relate to vibration. Charlie with 4 Busy Truth. Um, just wanted to make a quick video about rainbows. Um, gosh, I'm fascinated by um, how beautiful they are. I'm captivated by how unique and how mystical and just unnatural they seem. Um, and I've kind of noticed a few patterns about rainbows when I see them. Um, 
you can see like this light uh, illumination like wall that's within the inside of the of the bow itself and on the outside it, it looks like it's darker so um, and I've seen it basically from one rainbow to the next if you could just look at the pictures you'll see what I'm talking about um, it's almost like there's a divider that uh, it's not like you know the light prism is created by this this light that is cast through this uh, lens or whatever it's a it's a form of lensing in the atmosphere you have light that prisms and it's the lights split up somehow to create these different uh, um, uh, colors or whatever but um, the thing that is really sticking out to me lately is the thought of what light can be interpreted as. Um, I was listening to the Thunderbolts project and how they were talking about what light actually is and it's not traveling photons but it's actually um, wave protobations or something uh, that uh, are exciting particles. So anything that interacts with the energy the field that is generating the, the energy will project the light. So, um, so say for instance the sun is a form of energy, um, anything that interacts with its light will have excited particles. And when I say interacting with light, I'm actually re referring to interacting with its uh, energy field. Um, so anything that generates energy you will see the, the excited particles. So I'm about to point something out that was a continuation of my original rainbow video. Um, you have a picture of uh, this rainbow and it almost looks like a reverberation um, of, of the rainbow. It's like repeating itself. Um, now, the reason I'm pointing this out is it, 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 it resembles something that I... Okay, first of all, let me just point out the fact that my, my baby watches a show uh, of nursery rhymes called Little Baby Bums. And um, they have a song in there that goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet makes a rainbow. Now, the... the the weird thing about this is that there's seven colors in a rainbow, but you have it repeating itself in this image as if it were like an octave higher as it's going away from you, or it would be an octave lower as it gets closer to you. Um, so it, re it resembles an electrical wave, so to speak. And uh, this will tie into the, the light protobations um, equating to the same thing as a um, sound vibration or just a vibration in general. This is a, a form of vibration and it's creating light. Um, so that, it kind of adds to the whole thing that I'm talking about. And here's another example. Um, it's a reverberating uh, rainbow or creating octaves. Now, the reason I'm saying octaves is because look at this. You know, the, there's seven colors in a rainbow, but you also have the seven letter scale of, of music theory. You have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats itself in higher octaves or lower octaves. When we're talking about patterns of reality, you will see that, um, you know, there's seven, <laughs> seven's the number of perfection, which is a signature of a creator, if you ask me. You know, it could be a simulated reality, I'm not sure. I don't know how uh, these reverberations or, or vibrations are trying to manifest as uh, something that we can actually view or interact with, but it's an interesting pattern in reality.
Do you even understand or do you think anybody ever taught you what light actually was? Now, something prophetic that was said by Walter Russell, and Walter Russell never defined a field, and I digitized all his works, by the way, is that light doesn't move. He wrote an interesting little book called The Secret of Light. Now, if someone with a classical education, and this means a brainwashed moron, just like everybody out there, don't take offense at that, were to read that, they would scoff and close the book and throw it in the garbage can. The notion that light does not move has not only been put forward by... Um, Walter Russell, but uh, also by uh, Eric Dollard. That guy does nothing but live to experiment and read classical field theory. The notion that anything emits light is an absolute ridiculous absurdity. If you think that a closed, now of course they're filled with argon, a closed and vacuum sealed glass tube like a conventional light bulb actually emits light, then you're brainwashed like everybody else. Why well, turn it on and it emits light? No, then you're ignorantly assuming that if someone were to go into the middle of a large pond and start flapping their arms and the waves started lapping on the shore and hitting your little toenails there that the person is emitting something. What has the person done that's in the middle of a placid pond and they start flapping their arms like they're drowning? What we actually have here is the medium that they're in which would be the water. The waves are like pistons. Of course pistons in your car don't move. They reciprocate up and down off the crankshaft, but the pistons don't actually move in the longitudinal fashion in which the car moves. No. Waves don't move either. The only actually time that waves do move is when they actually hit the shore and a few other instances where the actual shoreline starts to shallow and then the waves do actually move, but waves don't move either. Waves actually cause another a bulk of waves to move and on and on down the line, but the waves themselves do not move. If you think that anything emits light, then you're as brainwashed as I was at an early age and everybody else. Nothing emits light. We can go further down that rabbit hole and say that light does not exist, because if we can only define light by what it does, then the concept of light as expressed by human ignorance as a subject cannot exist. I've given the analogy of Bob. If Bob were to stop walking then Bob vanished, then can we actually say that Bob ever existed? If we only define something by what it does and not by what it is, then therefore the principality or the subject or the denotation of what we refer to in the subject in reference to light certainly cannot exist. When we speak of light, we speak of a frequency, we speak of a wavelength, we speak of an intensity lumens or watts or lux, it doesn't matter the measurement used, all of those are human contrivances of measure just like time. Time of course itself does not exist. A shadow doesn't exist either, nor does the emptiness. We've reified these concepts as things that actually exist. The concept of light is uh, no different than time, space, a shadow, and emptiness. Light itself does not exist. Well, sure it does. Everybody knows that light exists. I mean, light's what's hitting your ugly face right now from those light bulbs. No, it's a field perturbation. The field perturbation manifests, i.e. is reflected off my face and gives it tonality, which goes into the camera, which hits the sensor, because of the resistance. Everything in the universe is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. If myself was not here, there would be no manifestation of that field perturbation, which is by its definition resistance. Nothing emits light. Period. Sure, light has travels too. We know that light travels X number of hundreds of thousand miles a second. Yeah, it's your... No. That's a rate of induction. That's the rate of maximum rate of induction of a frequency with a longitudinal pulse perturbation and transverse electrical magnetic components which give rise to the rate of induction due to the frequency any frequency for that matter. If something has a spatial footprint or a transverse, i.e. the right hand rule, I don't know if you know what the right hand rule is, partakes of the right hand rule of propagation and has a transverse component, i.e. a spatiality, then it must partake of a rate of induction. That which we call the uh, field perturbation or the maximum rate of induction or quote unquote the speed of light is not a speed at all. It's simply a rate of induction. Light does not exist. Nothing emits light. Something sets up through the release of energy, transference of energy, and that's what's happening. You know, the light is plugged into the wall socket. The wall socket is uh, connected to the power lines. Power lines connected to the generator. The generator is burning coal. It's burning uh, nuclear. It's the change of one form of energy into another. 
and that energy I desire to manifest as a field perturbation which we call light. But light is merely a concept. Light does not exist. Nothing emits light. In conclusion, we can see that everything is electrical in nature. Mankind will boast that we are masters of electricity and that we have harnessed its power. It is clear there is much more to this reality than one might perceive. The interesting thing to me is that we can identify to certain patterns in reality and we can harness electricity. We can view things and see the beauty in things and we can express love and have all kinds of other emotions. In my research, I have found that frequency and energy play a huge role in our reality. There's so much to consider and so much to analyze, but we're trying to hone in on what we consider truth or try to figure out the deep complexities of the reality that we call life. Sometimes it's easy to just get caught up in our own bias way of thinking. There's other things that I've considered as well in my research that there is absurdity in belief. There's absolutely nothing wrong with making assumptions when we're analyzing the data. But when you realize the vastness of this reality and you shed your belief slash bias, you find the rabbit hole goes much deeper than you would ever imagine. This will be the first edition of many in this series I call Patterns of Reality. It will be difficult to answer all of the questions so some of these topics will be left open-ended. My hope is that I'm able to give you some of the tools that I use to seek out some of the information that I have found. So please stick with me as we continue to explore other topics. Again, it is not my goal to validate anybody's perspective. My main objective is to bring the truth into the light, so to speak, or hone into the correct frequency. Thank you to everybody who's taken the ride with me. Stay tuned as we explore these topics and continue to find the patterns of reality.